In this video, I'm going to show you a really cool item that I found on Craigslist. This item here is a dental furnace. It's designed to go up to 1200 degrees centigrade or just over 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. I've been looking for a furnace for quite a while now so I could place my little crucibles inside the unit to melt down various types of metals. I'll be able to melt zinc, tin, aluminum, silver, copper, and gold inside this unit. All those metals fall below 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. These units usually go for around 450 to 500. This one was in excellent condition outside of a handle that was missing and the plastic cover which protects the gauge. I was able to acquire this unit for $140. Let me open it up and show you the inside. Pull up and out. You can see it was hardly used. Little if any discoloration. Let me give you a close up of the cavity. This material I have yet to discover what it is but it's very thin. It's almost like a fiberglass shell. You could see up close there's actually a mesh that's embedded inside this high temperature material. You can also see it around the edges. Looks like fiberglass drywall tape. The bottom of the furnace appears to be a stone-like material as well as the side, this side, and the ceiling of the furnace. Now way in the back you see that tube right there. All that is is the thermocouple. Let me slide this off. You can see the sensor way back there on top. And that senses the temperature and lets the unit know exactly when to cycle on and off. Let me put this back over the top. Okay. Back in. Only imperfection is this one little nick right over here, which is really nothing. Probably when the person was going in and out with an item, they brushed the side, but it really doesn't matter because there's so much overlap. It goes way out to that edge. So that's pretty cool. Let me close the door up on this. And then you push the handle down. Now it's locked. Let's take a look at the control panel. We have the temperature control on the right. You can have a low setting, or you can choose any setting you desire, all the way up to the high range. If you go to the high range, put that to the high range. This is the cycle indicator. When it cycles on and off, there's a neon lamp inside there. This furnace is US made, and it's made by Kerr. Right over here is a small metal rod, and what that does, it lets the unit know when the door is opened and closed. I'll open it up, you hear a click. When the door is open, the unit will of course power off. I changed out the rusty screws to stainless with new washers. This unit operates on 120 volts and draws around 8.5 amps. Now what I need to do with this unit to make it complete, it is missing the protective cover over this gauge. I don't want to ever damage that needle. It will have an effect on the accuracy of the unit. So what I'm going to do is make my own vacuum formed cover out of acrylic material to go over the gauge. Once it's made, I'll apply a little bead of E6000 in each corner or clear silicone and then slide the cover over the gauge. Let me show you the back of the furnace and then I want to show you the top of the furnace because there is a vent opening on top of the furnace to allow some heat to escape. Right over here are the two wires leading from the thermostat to the thermocouple going through the ceramic sleeve. And right here you can see the vent on top of the furnace. Now let's take a look at the gauge up close so I can explain exactly what I have to do using my vacuum forming machine to create a new cover. In order to make the cover I took a piece of wood and I cut it exactly the same size as this white plate. If you notice on the outside edge of the gauge there's a little groove. All right, There's the outside, there's the white, there's a groove that goes all the way around this gauge and that's exactly where my acrylic cover is going to pop into place. In order to make the cover I'm going to be using my vacuum forming machine which many of my viewers have seen me use in the past. Let's get started. What you're looking at right here is a vacuum forming plate that I designed a little over 20 years ago. I use this for making dental retainers as well as custom battery holders. If you enjoy these type of videos you can click over here with the circle with the eye. A drop down menu will appear and you will see my vacuum forming playlist. Now over here is the piece of wood that's cut to the exact same size as the gauge. 
I rounded off all the corners, all the edges. This is rounded off. And there is a slight taper. It's narrower towards me, wider at the back. And the reason for that is once this is vacuum formed, you need to be able to remove it from the plastic. Let me place it in the center. Right there. That's looking good. This is the acrylic material I'm going to be using. I think it's 0 .040. It's acrylic thermoplastic. This peels off. I'm going to peel that off first, get it all ready. And you can see right there. I'm going to lay this right over the top. Take the sealing ring, place it right over it, center it. Make sure it's right in the center there. I'm going to heat this plastic up and let it soften just a little bit so I'm able to seal the ring. Once the ring is sealed, I'm going to keep applying heat until the plastic is very pliable and then turn on the vacuum pump. Should be able to put the clamps on right now. Yep, I can clamp that. Okay, everything's in position. I'm going to apply the heat. Keep in mind, I do not have to go all the way down the sides of the wood. I only have to go down about a quarter of an inch. This block of wood is actually at the maximum limit for this vacuum forming plate. Usually I vacuum form things smaller than this piece of wood. Okay, let me turn this off and we're going to take a closer look. And let's take a look at this. It's perfect. See, it's down about a quarter of an inch. I don't need it much more than that. And also, because this is so close to the edge, if I tried to, I probably wouldn't even reach the bottom without making the thermoplastic break. So this worked out very well. I got the depth that I needed and there was no damage from excessive heating. Let me remove this and trim it to the correct size. Okay, this is the completed cover. It fits perfectly right over the gauge. I'm going to position it, apply a little bit of silicone in each corner, and then I'm going to come back and show you a photograph. And in the future, you should see me using this furnace for a few of my projects. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.